So here's a question we get a lot. Do deer have short-term and long-term memory capability? Well, I could easily answer this by saying, yes, they have some type of memory capability, but that really wouldn't do it justice. To do it justice, we have to dive a little bit into the research on memory, how it affects humans and animals. So what we know about memory is basically there's lots of different types of memory, but there's two basic types of memory. The first one is called explicit memory. Now, when we talk about explicit memory, this is episodic memory and cognitive memory. Episodic memory, that's pretty easy. Things that we remember. I remember when I was 14 years old, going to deer camp for the first time. And I remember my uncle bringing diet orange soda. And I remember putting it in the truck and going to deer camp. That's an episodic memory. A cognitive memory is more concepts and data. I remember that Robin Yelp added 331 in 1982. That's data that we remember. Do animals have that type of memory? Well, I would argue that white-tailed deer do not have those types of memories, but I would argue that they have implicit memories just like we do. Implicit memories, again, two subcategories, basically. The first one is procedural memory, how we remember how to do things, how to walk, how we talk, how deer communicate vocally eat, things like that. The other one is learned memory, and this is the one where hunters really can get a better understanding of deer behavior and hone your hunting tactics accordingly. Learned memory is conditioned responses a lot of times, and we learn that through Pavlov's dogs. You know, Pavlov taught those dogs to salivate, condition them at the sound of a bell when they were presented with food. Now, if you would think about that for a deer, how does that work? Pretty easy, you know, you can condition deer to a feeder. You can condition them to food plots. You can condition them to danger, especially tree stands. Now, how does that short-term memory affect them? I would say that it doesn't affect them for a long-term effect, and here's why. There's another thing in psychological study called fading effect bias. And we know this affects humans and we know it affects animals. Fading effect bias works like this. When we have memories, our good memories are long-term. We remember them for a long time. Our really traumatic memories fade a lot faster, especially when you're talking about severe trauma. We forget about the details and it helps us cope. Animals are the same way, but animals are different in the fact that Fading effect bias, I would say, affects them more because if they were walking around constantly with the memory of bad events, they simply couldn't survive because, especially in a deer's case, it's a prey species. So in the case of fading effect bias, a trapper can explain this very well in the fact that when they talk about a trap-shy animal, especially coyotes and raccoons, a coyote or raccoon that comes to a trap and has a bad episode, a bad experience of getting caught in that trap and then released and the trauma associated with that, that will hold with them a little bit longer. And if you ask any trapper, especially raccoon trappers, box traps, those older raccoons, they've learned that that's bad, they're not gonna go in there. But if you change up your tactics a little bit, you wait a couple of weeks, you're gonna catch that raccoon again. The same thing works with deer, and how I always try to parallel it for hunters is that if a deer is conditioned to your tree stand, especially because they're using sight, sound, and smell on top of it, they're gonna avoid that spot. So what do we do? We switch things up a little bit. We might rest that stand for a little bit. But the other thing that we learn is if we take the pressure off, you're gonna see that deer in front of that stand again and again and again, and it doesn't matter if he busted you once or twice. Mature bucks, obviously a little bit better memory because they're relying on their sight, sound, and smell. So a couple things that I do, number one, a total scent-free approach, as much as possible every single time I go to that tree stand. I don't hunt that stand or blind unless the wind conditions are perfect or near perfect. I'm not gonna hunt them if the conditions are bad because I'm educating, I am training those deer, just like Pavlov with his dogs, I'm training those deer to avoid that spot, at least temporarily. And also things like having a buddy come pick me up in an ATV or a truck. We say blowing the deer off the field instead of me walking across there. 
So yes, absolutely, deer possess some type of memory capability, but we can defeat that memory capability if we are really diligent about sight, sound, and smell. For more information on deer behavior, biology, and research, and hunting tactics, be sure to check out our regular website at deerandeerhunting.com and be sure you click the subscription button here and you'll get all of our new videos the second they come out.